my fellow friends, welcome to the program Careers Connect, a DPS alumni network presentation. My name is Neelam Bedi Son. I am an HR trainer and uh, I have my working presence in uh, Delhi and Dubai. And I'm into industry from last more than two decades. In the competitive world of today, the pandemic has taught us be open to adjustments. There's nothing about this current moment in history that allows stubbornness. Challenge and adversity are your weaknesses, but unlock your true strengths. Hang it there as, as better times are ahead. The secret of crisis management is not good versus bad. It's preventing the bad from getting worse. No matter how much falls on us, we keep plowing ahead. That's the only way to keep the roads clear. The education sector has been the most affected one during this period and has made the students look very at career options which are overwhelming and even confusing. Hence, we at Careers Connect, an initiative of DBS Alumni Network, aims to help the students make informed choice by interacting with top-notch professionals globally. The aim of the talk show is to understand their success stories and their career paths with mixed emotion at different times, circumstances, and environment. Now I invite Mr. Rajiv Soni, the man behind this program, Careers Connect, to say a few words. Good evening, everybody. So the, uh, the Career Connect first uh, program was held in the year 2014 in a premium school in NCR. And uh, I was asked to give a talk uh, on uh, several careers. That's not really possible. So uh, I got around about 30 of my friends who uh, were at the helm of their careers and I requested them to come to this particular school at 8 a.m. in the morning. And we divided the entire 11th and 12th of 600 students into these 30 different um, you know, work professions. Also, we had beamed in five people from overseas, uh, from five different uh, countries from across the globe. So this has uh, its a genesis way back in the year 2014. Today, uh, I wouldn't say thanks to the pandemic, but uh, thanks to the environment, thanks to the circumstances, uh, thanks to the change in the technology, we have ability to connect with uh, professionals around the world. And today we have one such person, uh, Sanchita. Uh, she's, uh, she's a magnificent and mesmerizing uh, dancer. So uh, we have invited her to come and uh, share her career journey. So with those few words, over to Neelamji. Thank you very much, Rajiv. Today we have with us a dynamic, enthusiastic, and a perfect blend of beauty and brains, who depicts dancers are the athletes of God. She strongly believes do it big, do it right, and do it in style. A BCom honors uh, graduate from Lady Shriram College and postgraduate from University of Melbourne in public policy and management. She is recognized as India's dancing queen for translating ancient texts through dance. A Kathak dancer and a choreographer dancing since the tender age of five years. The very meaning of word Kathak is to tell a tale. She's known for her ex ex exquisite dance performances from all cultures and bringing them to life on stage. She grew up in India, a disciple of India's most celebrated Katha Guru, the present age, Padmashri uh, Guru, Shomna Narayan. She's an active and integral part of her Guru's Asavari Institute. Her training uh, in her early years was with Guru Tirath Ajmani, and Guru Ved Vyas, and she quickly gained prominence, winning dance uh, contests at district and state levels, and received nominations to perform at prestigious events such as SARC and Asia Samilian. Since then, the international state has been her second home. She's a cultural entrepreneur and a thought leader. She's also the first Indian classical art and culture columnist in Australia, besides being founder and artistic director of Kathaprana Dance Academy at Melbourne. Let's welcome the dancing queen, Sanchita Abrol. Welcome, Sanchita, to the show. Thanks, you, ma'am. Thanks, Anila, ma'am, and Rajiv, sir, for inviting me here, first of all. I feel it's, it's my honor to participate in such a great initi initiative. 
I wish it was there when I was a child, confused with my career options <laughs> and trying to pick which one will suit me. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, and for such a beautiful introduction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming and educating your time. with your dancing and why specifically Kathak? So when, uh, so as you just said that I started when I was five years old. So it wasn't something that I decided. I wasn't given with many options. So as a child, as a uh, youngest child in the family, so I have an elder sister and she was learning Odissi. So I started my journey in dancing with wow. Odissi. Wow. But then uh, we traveled outside India and by the time we came back, that guru stopped coming to our hometown. So then my neighbors, my one of my friends was learning Kathak and I was just playing with her and that guru came, Guru Vaitya Sri, and he, he saw the interest that, okay, I can be a good dancer. So he said, no, no, start dancing. Don't watch. Yeah. You, if you are in a dance class, you have to dance. So I started dancing. And I actually found it like a natural call. Like I felt, mm -hmm. oh, this is something that I can actually do it. It was very natural. I felt like this is what will make me happy. So I then forced my parents and my parents were very keen that, okay, you know, kids need to learn something extra. Extracurricular is must. And so I just entered the Kathak world. <laughs> Correct. Wow. That's nice. You know, you started with DC and landed up Kathak, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Okay, you have performed in front of many eminent personalities, right? Including former president, prime minister, member of parliament, Australian premier of, of Victoria, Charles, Prince of Wales, Camilla, Duchess of Cornwall. Uh, can you tell us, you know, Sanchita, what, what was the most challenging performance of yours? You know, uh, oh. Uh, so I would say sometimes it doesn't matter who's in the audience. Sometimes even if you have four or five people sitting in the audience, that can be the most challenging performance Correct. to get attention of those four and five Correct. without any, you know, pomp and like the, the glitter of the stage. So sometimes True. even the simplest performance that you would think, oh, this is easy, can be the most challenging. But in my case, I think because I've worked a lot and I've experimented with my uh, work styles, I've choreographed and directed and screen, like, you know, writing and storyboarding. I've done all of those. So I think the most challenging, I would say, was Prayutsu, which ah. was a homage to our soldiers. So to show a soldier's emotions 
and oh. not just the strength because when we say soldier everyone goes to the one emotion the strength the courage Correct. but i was also showing the vulnerability the weakness is wow. the uh, you know that missing of home the uh, missing wow. of your loved ones in your the life and that was i think yeah. most challenging to show yeah. two sides of the coin Beautiful. and i experimented with the poetry indian poetry western poetry wow. um the stage setup and it was just unbelievable and uh, yes and that time our uh, first defense uh, chief of defense staff uh, ravat sir was there and he was also you know like That's mesmerized by how yeah. to show that so i think that was most challenging <laughs> it's 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 very touching also to hear you know because the soldiers uh, you know life especially home front you know he misses the maximum you know the maximum correct so i uh, it was a challenge because you have to as a dancer you are sometimes a woman sometimes uh, like gender doesn't stop you on stage correct. you are basically correct. reflecting what character you are you correct. have to imbibe that character so i think that character in with itself was so heavy that yeah. i felt the heaviness on stage as well and i felt that responsibility that it's such yeah. a uh you know it's showing soldiers life is not easy so i felt that responsibility that i have to do it correctly correct perfect perfect okay uh you know i have seen like shambhu maharaj the known uh, you know kathak uh, his son also birju maharaj they also were you know he was also he also made a mark in his life but somehow are there many gurus in dancing who are dominated by women or uh, could you tell us is it gender based it's a very interesting question a lot of people ask me this so um, i would say you have to understand the history of kathak first so okay. it started like other indian classical dance forms okay. uh, it started as a temple dance so the most of the gurus actually all of the gurus were male brahman priests who were okay. teaching and preach, uh, preaching kathak as a storytelling dance form okay, okay. so there were not lots of movements and they used to express the stories so okay. initially there were more male gurus later on the females started taking in and they started oh. learning kathak through those male gurus and now post independence what we see is more and more females are taking it and less and less males want the connection with the dance form oh. but in last few years i would say i'm again looking at a change in the way now again i see more males are coming in because the kathak in itself is a dance form which can be changed according to you so they feel the freedom Correct. it's a, like a in one of the indian classical dance form that gives you that freedom to be natural so i think then now again males are changing it into a uh, a dance form that they can relate with Uh, whether it's contemporary movements or more manliness in the grace and how to you know even oh. if i'm standing there's like one is a female the so called feminine way of yeah. our yeah. like a posture that whatever yeah. i take and there's yeah. another uh, we say like more male oriented uh, way to stand but mm. now i think we have come in the emergence of both two wow. and now again i see that males are also taking in females and they are developing their own dance style oh. they are developing it as they want wow. so it's it's a uh, future holds a lot wow. <laughs> so so more of uh, creative skills are coming up in this yes <laughs> and it's amazing uh, young young dancers are coming with their own choreographies and uh, with their own style their own thinking their own improvisation wow, wow. and it's amazing wow. so a lot of content is now available as well very nice very nice okay for those who are curious about a career kathak dancing what advice would you give them and what are the qualities you think the traits one should have to become a dancer oh for any classical dance whether it's even indian classical or a western classical i think the most important is you have to be disciplined Correct. you have to really Correct. give up your 100% you cannot expect that even with 80% you will be able to achieve you really have to give your 100% to achieve the results that you expect Correct. then the other thing is it's a dance form hmm. which utilizes all your body So we say all the angika mahara, everything in our Indian classical uh, literature, everything, even the smallest muscle, 
has to be used. Like you will see a oh. lot of dancers using their eye muscles, eyelids, yeah. their face expression, Correct. their jaw, in a certain way that, you, that it may appeal to you or it may not, but right. they will be utilizing them in a very different way. Yeah. So I think for understanding to be a dancer, a classical dancer, first of all, you have to be aware of the context, the literature, what it tells you. Because mm -hmm. there are rules and regulations given, the postures, the different styles of spins, the different styles mm -hmm. of footwork, the different styles of chal or the expressions, bhavam, technicalam. So you have to understand the theory as well, which Beautiful. not many people under, like think of. They have a misconception, dance means only practical, mm -hmm. not the theory part. There's a lot of theory involved as well. Correct. Then of course, there comes the personal commitment your uh you have to understand your strengths and weaknesses and try and work on both of them together wow. you have to play around with what you want to tell what's your story because you can't always express what others are doing because then there's no newness so you have to come up with your own things yeah. and i think then true. it's a long path <laughs> true, true. because it's a never-ending journey <laughs> so beautiful ex beautifully explained by you sanchita <laughs> commendable i would say okay thank tell you me, what are the skills one needs to develop one goes to the path of dance especially i'm talking about kathak you know do you think like you just now said the foot movement the hand movement and other things but tell me something uh, sanchita that uh, do you think that these foot movements and these things can also help in the scientific way in the medical therapy also yes so currently i'm the first indian classical dance movement therapist in australia wow and uh, so uh, not many indian dancers are even aware of this as a different field Correct. so we have to understand that dance in the therapy is very different from dancing on a stage Correct. dancing on a stage is what you sometimes would be doing for yourself what yes. you would be doing for others also but it's in a hmm. different format but call it, it's like basically you have to achieve the targets. It's like actually health uh, sector. You mm -hmm. know the problem, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know the results, what you are trying to achieve, and you have to formulate a method. So right. it's actually very medically oriented now as a field growing mm -hmm. all over the world. A lot of research has been done. And we are, so in Kathak, we have a style of thought. Thought means like, you know, when a dancer suddenly while dancing takes, a beautiful pose like you know sometimes when photographers would be waiting for that moment so okay. it's called thought suddenly you know and now people so we have some movements slow movements that we in kathak imbibe and right okay. now i i'm only doing uh some practice here and i'm using those movements to help wow. my clients wow. so even the footwork we say you know when we are dancing we are trying to take out our anger out on a, on a floor, we can say Correct. like that, that you're Correct. literally stomping hard, stomping yes. hard. True. And so that is helpful sometimes for your stress relief, for your anxiety problem. So now a lot of research has been done and is going on with dance and it's uh, our Indian classical dance, it's movements, it's patterns, and how we can use it with the signs to help others. Correct, correct. It is, it, it is called dance therapy, right? It is called... Uh, correct. Yeah. Because so you have, it's called creative arts therapy, expressive arts therapy, correct. dance movement therapy, correct. then you have drama therapy, uh, then you have uh, poetry therapy, and uh, so all come under the creative arts therapy. Mm. And dance movement therapy means specializing with dance as a therapy model. Correct, correct. Yeah. Correct. And, 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 I, and I believe it cures even Parkinson patients and even Absolutely. Yes, you know. Yes. I have seen some of the things that I can't even explain. And when I started doing it, so mm. I was volunteering with the NAS Foundation in India, which is mm. for kids who are suffering with AIDS. Uh, there's a center and it was unbelievable, the results. And that time I wasn't even aware of uh, a course called Dance Movement Therapy. I didn't even know you need to be specialized. Otherwise, you can't practice it. It's a proper Correct. health and science combining Correct. with art and culture. Correct. And um, and I saw some unbelievable things. Like it's it's truly, truly a proper therapy. Correct, correct. Okay, Sanjita, tell me, you know, out of you chose Australia for dancing, you know, and now you are upgrading yourself, getting into another field, you know. 
So what do you think uh, it's, is the constant learning required in this field also like other professions? Yes, it's a must. So uh, because lots of my friends are in other professions, they are not dancers. So we sometimes have this conversation, uh, this continuous requirement for growth in every field. And this, especially in art and culture, is now increasing more than other. Wow. So at least in other fields, sometimes, you know, okay, this is the place where you will be satisfied. But in art and culture now, there's so many artists in the whole world. And if you want to actually be satisfied, you would. As an artist, you, you know, perfection is, a, is just That's a mystery. It. Yes, yes. Yes. You don't know. Uh, nobody knows if it's a myth or what. So we are just going after perfection, which might be a myth, but it needs continuous learning. It needs continuous development. It needs a lot of hard work. You have to explore different options uh, to, you know, make your art also grow with you and you as well growing with the art form. Wow. Wow. So professionally, you are explaining it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, Sanjita, tell me how lucrative is this profession? Very important. <laughs> uh, so I'll have to be honest with it, uh, with this question, because uh, it's not very really lucrative as a profession. And what I did as a child also, I was also trying to be a full-time dancer, but my parents were saying, no, you have to find a backup plan. And at that stage, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand it. And I was like you know like it was a whole kiosk in the house for a few days that no i just want to be a full-time dancer and now i completely understand what Correct. they were trying to explain me at that stage Correct. Correct. now that i'm a public policy consultant i know i have a backup to fall upon now i know if i need something in my life if i have some personal uh, targets personal you know that oh i want to do this or i want to do that i can achieve it by my other career as well because dance is not a profession which is still commercially uh, commercialized completely in Correct. india Correct. it's still growing it's still yes. evolving and with every generation more and more pathways are being open True. so probably the paths that were open for me they were not there for 20 years back 30 years back for my guru True. so now yes we have more options to take it ahead but still you need something permanent side by side along with it just to have that security in life yeah very important i think because you know you need to have a little financial backing you know uh, this can be, oh, yes this can you can be passionate about it not a problem correct so correct. pursue it in, in your life but then yes and you can make have... your passion into profession and correct. i would still say keep something on the side just to have a backup plan very nice perfect Okay, how stressful is your professional life and how do you balance your work and home? Uh, uh, I think you should ask this to my husband <laughs> or my parents. <laughs> the next question is about that only. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it's, okay. it is hard sometimes. At times it is very hard. Um, but I think it depends on you. How good are you at, at managing it? So it's like any other profession. Sometimes, you know, like I'm from BCom on, I've done BCom on as a lot of my friends have, uh, right. are working in, uh, you know, big four companies. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they have their busy time, busy time of, you know, submitting all the things, finalizing the budgets and whatnot. Correct. And sometimes it's similar with our art and culture field. Sometimes you have show after show after show, or you're on a tour, you're on a dance tour for a month or two months. And sometimes it will be quiet and calm and you can enjoy your life at home. <laughs> so I think there are phases, <laughs> there are ups and downs. And uh, then I think it's all on you, how you manage your time. And it's very important to learn the skill early in life, I must say, uh, because it goes along. It goes along because then you can manage not just one profession, right? Like, you know, I'm now an art and culture columnist. I am doing dance movement therapy. I am a dancer and choreographer. Correct. I run a dance school and I'm also a public policy consultant working Correct. for modern slavery. Correct. And then I have a family life. <laughs> so, it's, too, it's too many eggs in the same basket. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, sometimes you know, it's like, oh, am I doing too much 
but then you get the satisfaction. <laughs> so I think till you're getting the satisfaction in that management, in that hassle, That's correct. best. <laughs> right. And um, uh, your husband is also a dancer or is he, is he from some other profession? No, he's, he's a very terrible dancer. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so opposite, opposite poles attract, you know, it's like that. I know. Uh, so he's a lawyer and uh, he's an expert leader of modern slavery laws. Wow. And he's the first person to write about the law in the world. And he's written, published three books. And now hopefully wow. fourth one will be out this year or next year. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it was, I think what clicked was my public policy background and his law background. And uh, we just want to do something good in the world also. And we, want, we love to go and volunteer. And so I think that was the connecting point. <laughs> <laughs> I think more than that, the beauty and the vers versatile <laughs> and your vivacious, you know, dancing, I think that made him, you know, fall for you, I think. <laughs> That's very nice to hear. Okay. Uh, tell me, Sanchita, if you turn the clock back, would you still like to be the twin professional what you are? Uh, yes. I think uh, uh, I've got a, what I chose was good combination because sometimes I say any stage related field, whether it's dance, singing, music, anything stage related, theater, drama, sometimes it gives you high in life. Correct. And the other life times of bring me down. So yeah. it gives me a ground level to stay on that. It, yeah. And it happens to every artist. And we have to understand it that those highs and downs will come, whether it's through media attention mm -hmm. or something. Sometimes you will be appreciated, sometimes you will be criticized. True. And, but when I dance, I say I dance for myself. And when I work as a public policy consultant or a dance woman therapist, I say I do it for others. Wow. So, you know, that gives me a balance. So I don't think so I would, you know, go back and change time. I think I've got a good mix. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully so, supporting family. <laughs> correct. So, so you mentally stimulate yourself by your public policy and then you mentally yes. also stimulate yourself by your dancing, taking out your yes. stress. <laughs> yes, you have to. You, you really need that stimulation. Sometimes I get stories from my field work, which I then try and emote through my dance. Wow. And sometimes I learn something spiritual through my dance, which I try and imbibe in my life. So wow. it's a very balanced cycle, I think. <laughs> Somehow it's working. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Very nice. Okay, do you think, Sanchita, that, uh, you know, artistic talents like music and dance and all this, are they good stress busters? They are. Definitely they are. It's a meditation in itself. So mm. for me, if someone tells me, if someone tells me to sit down and meditate for, you know, half an hour, I probably will not be able to do it. But mm. when I dance, that is my meditation. Wow. So it's like I, my escape room. So my dance studio, I say, that's my escape route, my home studio. I say, nah, if I'm, you know, you need sometimes your mind to stop as well. If it's too much happening, you need to stop as well and sit down and just rethink, Re you know, you, you just rethink, okay, what, what is happening? How mm -hmm. I can manage and balance. So I think my meditation, my stress booster is my dance. Beautiful. And it just connects me to my soul, my internal soul. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you, uh, Sanchita, tell us many, there the are many dance forms in the Indian contest. So which one would you like to encourage to the youngsters of today? As a Kathak dancer, I'll be a little biased and say <laughs> Kathak dance. <laughs> uh, but I think um, what people don't understand is that Indian classical, the eight Indian classical dance forms that we have, or we call them actually traditional dance forms of India, um, they come from the same context. They all come from the same context that uh, they were all temple dancing. They were used for the storytelling, for the philosophy, to understand the philosophy, the you know, hard concepts of True. philosophy were basically being broken by smaller movements, little hand gestures, yeah dance, expression, storytelling. Hmm. So 
I think when you understand that the basic crust is all same, then it makes it easy for you that what appeals you is basically what you're choosing. At the end, they all are same. Hmm. Yes, the structure might be different. The choreography style might be different. The postures that we use and we see might be different. Like in Katha, generally we have a straight poster. A Katha hmm. dancer would have a straight poster. Hmm. Whereas a, a Kuchipuri or a Bharatnatyam dancer will use more of Tribanga and like, you know, bending down posters. Hmm. And so that's it. But we all have the same vocabulary. Hmm. We all have the same dictionary. We all have the same posters, same spin style. Everything hmm. is same. Mm -hmm. It's just how it is utilized is different. So you have to then ask yourself what appeals to you? What is your choice? What do you think will be, you know, best for you and for right. the dance form? Would Sorry. you be uh, able to do justice to that dance form? Is what I think you have to question. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, Sanchita, tell me, is there any age for this, uh, you know, to learn? That's one. And the second question is, you know, which is very important, that do you think that uh, you know, a, a child ha has to have the traits, important traits to be a dancer. Well, uh, there's no age. I have students who are little toddlers. Um, <laughs> Correct. And then to an age of 60, 70 even. And uh, so there's no age of dancing. And what I've noticed is sometimes it's easy to teach technical to a little child. Oh. And sometimes it's easy to teach bhav or the expressive dancing to an adult because wow. an adult has gone through all the stages of life, Correct. have actually, you know, uh, experienced it in the real life. Correct. And when I ask them to emote it, they can emote it very easily. But Correct. whereas if I'm teaching the child, I'll probably start with the Krishna story, the naughtiness or the makhim no. or something like that, because they can, uh, you know, relate to that side of the life right now. So I think dancing has no age, but the earliest you start, you can imbibe more, we say, it's because it's a lifelong journey. Hmm. Um, but uh, so the earliest, I would say, is around five years of age, not before that, because it kind of affects your then uh, your lower body, your uh, foot Correct. shape and everything. Correct. Correct. So it's good to start at five, year, uh, five years of age and not before that. Hmm. Then now to your second question about the traits right? right uh so i would say yes there is an inborn talent that is required very much but training is must. must so the traits would be yes there you have to first ask yourself is it what something you would be interested in are you uh, can you be a storyteller do you like just sitting down and telling some story to a child or do you like to express it with some emotion something and uh, you know, like just being expressive and being like, you know, we in Indian family would say, oh, she's a drama queen or oh, he's a, just yeah, a correct, correct. you know, we just ignore sometimes those things. But those are the traits that That's a child can show. Yes. yes. And sometimes we just ignore it. But that is where sometimes we have to be more conscious and aware. Correct. As a parent, I would say, like, you know, we, we just have to be more aware of what Correct. the child wants what the child can Correct. you know so i think the traits yes are important the inborn talent is important but the training is must as well because without training that talent will be always hidden so any good institutes you feel uh, you know which are very very prominent in india yes so uh, the most prominent for kathak are we talking about kathak or yeah, kathak, kathak. yeah. so the most prominent <clears throat> would be I would suggest my Guru's Institute as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> but then there's Katha Kendra. Then there is Prachin Kala Kendra, Gandhar Vishwadale. Um, there are lots of lots of now uh, other institutes also coming along. Um, but I think the traditional ones are the best, the best. to start with. Yes. yes. Okay, one last question to you and a quick one. What advice you would like to give it to the youngsters of today for, the, for, for having a profession in uh, Katha? or dancing i would say it is um don't think as a profession first think as a passion are you committed first you have to ask yourself like any other profession you have to be committed Correct. and once you're committed it becomes easy it becomes smoother but 
you have to really understand it's not just dancing it's beyond that it's uh-huh. it's a very deeper level of understanding that you need to build and right. to build that you have to first read about it you have to first talk to people talk uh-huh. to the people in the field or connected to the field because and go and watch performances go and see and try it at home yes training is required but just uh-huh. see what you can do what you can uh-huh. come up with your your own ideas Yeah. and be dedicated once you have decided then just be dedicated that yeah. is the most important thing you have to devote yourself to the art form for that art form to accept you beautiful beautiful <laughs> thank you so much sanchita for coming it has been a pleasure having you i tell you such thank a beautiful you. thing such a beautiful program i would say okay a little appreciation package for you Now you oh. strongly believe in the trust expression of a people is in its dance and its music. When the music changes, so does the dance. Dance is the hidden language of the soul. In life, dancers come and go in the twinkle of an eye, but the dance lives on. You have to love dancing to stick to it. It gives you nothing back, no manuscripts, no store away, no painting, not nothing to show on the wall, maybe a hang in the museum, no poems to be printed, nothing. It's a single fleeting moment when you feel alive. Thank you so much, Sansa. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> and I think it was a wonderful, wonderful program with you. Now over to us. Oh. If he has any questions, yeah. No, I have no questions. I just have one uh, observation to make, and that is, you know, that I think dance also uh, is a very uh, interesting physical uh, activity. you know uh, people pursue dance uh, as a form of very loosely put losing weight yes you know, that's another interesting aspect of it that you know of course um, uh, and i would i dare say that a dancer would uh, have extra uh, tires of flat <laughs> or flat so they they very they are very toned am i right in saying that i mean no, that's of course yes <laughs> you know, they are pretty toned i think they must be doing a lot of exercise uh uh off yes. the stage you know yes. and also diet control also perhaps correct. correct well i don't think so diet control is a must sir i think it happens naturally yeah. right, uh, but right. what happens is because even for uh, a normal dance rehearsal we would first do warm up exercises we would do right. tatar we would do footwork for at least right. half an hour one correct. hour as long correct. as the dancer can go Correct. So you know it's it's the exercise package, the whole thing, warm up and the cool down exercises, and then the dancing and the rehearsals and long hours of rehearsals. So I think sometimes uh, overeating also is required. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Okay, Sanjita, thank you very much for coming. It has been indeed a pleasure having you on board. Such a lovely program, I'll say. Thank you very much, viewers. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you once again, Sanjita. Bye bye. Take care. Shabha khair to you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Great to have a young and enterprising girl today.